Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time we're going to be playing with some more of the BES Zodiac deck that I played previously in a video a couple of weeks back. But this time we're playing it again because of the spoilization of BES Big Core Mark III. This card actually just does a good little bit. Basically, since it does replace Covered Core as the biggest one, Covered Core is still one of here just to be an additional big monster. But it also does provide, you know, recursion, allowing you to shuffle back your BES monsters in Graveyard, allowing your engine to basically keep moving as long as you want it to be in terms of being a floater engine, as well as the fact that it is basically a Cyber Dragon-like card that can summon itself out of your hand for free, making it bypass the need to have the field spell. There's a lot of different good things that this card actually provides for the deck, for the theme, and it just kind of sucks that it took us literally this long to get finally a good ship, other than something like Tetran. Tetran being, you know, a good form of spell and trap card removal is the only real thing that makes it decent other than all these other ships just being absolutely kind of, kind of garbage in terms of how they're just vanillas. But basically, this deck is meant to use your Elemental Triangles and your Terror Tops to use your Zodiacs to bypass your normal summon and make very, you know, aggressive and defensive play lines. You've got the Digusto Emeralds in here as well, which also form as a, uh, as a recursion layer for your ships. But since we have the Big Core Mark III, they are much less emphasized on being used to put back your ships. Thusly, they can be used to focus more on the Zodiac Beast engine until you start running low on Mark III access, if that's even a thing that can happen. But this deck list is very similar to the one I previously played with, and I mean, it should be pretty standard to like understand. You try to use Great Fortress Zelos to make your ships immune to things, and you try to use the Zodiacs to be aggressive lines, as well as protect your Great Fortress Zelos, but it also, they just allow you to play on your own pace, because you can use Drancia on your turn and your opponent's turn to pop your ships, thus allowing you to float with multiple boss rushes and establish a good bit of advantage in that area as well. So it allows you to play the game on your own pace, slow your opponent down, be defensive lines, be aggressive lines, as well as allow you to trigger your own things, which is all very, very important uh, aspect of this deck. But I'm not going to waste too much more time talking about this. Let's just jump straight into the first game and see how the deck can actually perform with the addition of this new ship that basically so like supports itself, essentially. But let's just jump straight in. Alright, so let's see how this goes this time. I've been trying to film this video for the last 45 minutes because I'll get through with a game and then it'll crash in my side decking screen, which is something I'm not too happy about. But we're not on the checkmate server for this one because I'm playing with beta cards in the uh, in the language of Yu-Gi-Oh Pro. It's a card that is not legal yet, it's not out in the OCG. So ultimately, that's what I'm gonna be dealing with today. He let me go first. He won Rock, Paper, Scissors and said you go first. So that's pretty cool. I get to start with Terra Top, I've got Max C and I've got Great Fortress Zelos. That's all really good. Um, so I'm gonna be able to make Drancia and trigger my own things and get multiple special summons, because I'll have double boss rush. That is so cool. Well, I'll just have, I'll just have one boss rush, honestly. Um, I don't think it's necessary to have two. I don't want to really waste the cards, per se. Um, but, eh, we'll find out. Uh, but, so I'm going to be able to do this and, uh, and see where this goes. But, yeah, I'm not playing on the Checkmate server. This is ultimately what I want to use the uh, Patreon Discord uh, like server message things for is that I want to be able to mix it up and do some checkmate ranked and then when I'm doing videos like this I'll be able to have access to uh, to you guys to just play matches and play against new things play against old things there's there's multitudes of different things that I want to do for the channel but ultimately we just want to uh, we're just gonna have to take it as it comes right now and that is just playing against randoms and unranked on uh, on Yu-Gi-Oh Pro because honestly that's that's all I have access to right now because the Patreon literally just launched like yesterday and so I don't have nearly anyone or at this point at this point I don't have anyone pledging um, to uh, to do anything basically because I mean it just launched I mean I'm not expecting anything quickly and so uh, so there is that but what I'll be able to do here is I'm summoning the Momorat. And uh, so I'll summon Momorat by detaching Momorat, or Marmorat, excuse me. Uh, it's Rat. It's it's Rat. Come on now. Let's let's be real. Let's be real. We all know what it is, what it means. And uh, so Bullhorn here, or not Bullhorn. It is Bullhorn. But now its name is Broad Bull. Man, can't they just keep the names the same? There was no reason to change Bullhorn to Broad Bull. 
It's so irritating for someone like me who spends literally months knowing these cards as their OCG names, and then they come out. And then it's, uh, then it's suddenly just not that name anymore. <laughs> it's such a problem for me. But, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to activate any of these first. Right? Uh, because what I want to do is I want to see if I draw into a boss rush or another field spell straight off hand, off the rip, off of this Digesto Emerald. Because, honestly, that would be the better thing for me to have here, because if I get another boss rush, basically that's going to allow me to uh, to put double on the board, pop my monster with Drancia, and then summon Tetran and another uh, big core uh, Mark III from my deck. Uh, but that's another mole we're at, so not really all were what, not really what we were wanting. Uh, but what we can do is we can do Great Fortress Zelos here and add Boss Rush, and so then I can special my uh, MK3 or my Mark 3, and I can special it in Attack Mode. I could pop it with Drancia if I want to, or I could just put Boss Rush up, and it would just be basically uh, a non-factor. Um, but if I had anyone other than uh, than Mark 3 here or Tetran, I would definitely probably be popping it with Drancia, just so that I could float into this or Tetran, because th those are what you really want. You want to put Tetran with a counter on it, or you want to put this with counters on it up first. Now the thing is, is that I'm going to be able to uh, I'm going to be able to put Boss Rush up, and I can play at my own pace on my opponent's turn. That's something I've touched on previously, is that I can use Drancia to pop my stuff on my opponent's turn, and ultimately it's not too big of a factor. But look at how many cards I have. Jesus. Um, this is a pretty damn good board. <laughs> let's be uh, let's be honest here. It's a pretty damn good board, uh, if I do say so myself. But so I've got Drancia, which I can then protect with Viper. I can protect it with itself. I've got Max C. I've got multiple different things that are really good for me right now, um, in the uh, in the short term and even in the long term. They're actually really good. Uh, but so I'm gonna start holding down A just so that I don't miss activation windows for Viper or Drancia. And then, based off what happens, is going to be uh, is going to be how things maneuver. Okay, so he's doing that. I'm going to go ahead and activate Max C. If he's normal summoning Singing Lanius, that tells me he probably has Fuzzy Lanius. In which case, definitely want a Max C here to get that inherent special summon draw. But if he doesn't special summon here, I'm fine with that because I'm going to be able to use my Drancia in like the end phase to pop my uh, my big core, and then that will allow me to float into Tetrans. Uh, but so from here, I'm not too threatened with whatever exceed he's gonna make because he's forced to make uh, what raid raptors off this now. Yeah, you can only summon raid raptors this turn. Uh, so this is Blade Burner Falcon. Um, it has basically no effect. Um, when this card destroys your opponent's monster by battle, you can attach any number and you can destroy that many number. And it's in defense mode, so it doesn't matter. It's a thousand. It doesn't gain three thousand unless my life is three thousand higher than his. Yeah, I'm not too worried about this card. I'm not too worried about it at all. Rank up Magic Astral Force, though. He's going to be able to put this into, like, Revolution Falcon? No, no, sir. No, sirry, Bob. We're going to pop that, and that way it goes to Grave and your Astral Force does not resolve. That sounds like a much better plan. Um, because it can't physically send it off Astral Force, therefore you do not rank up on top of it. Um, so the Fuzzy Lanius will get its search. That's fine. Um, I mean, I've got Instant Fusion, I've got Dimensional Barrier, I've got... Way too many things to work with here. And he's got a Fuzzy Lanius that he can't summon. He's got two unknown back row and one card in hand. So okay. I'm I'm fine with this with this juncture of how the how these things have uh, progressed. This is another great fortress Zelos, which means I could go ahead and play this on top, or I could play terraforming just so I deck them. Um, and get another boss rush, and then because of that I'd be able to uh, have multiples because you do want to cart you do kind of want to stack these things up um, if we're being real and then I can use emerald after I search for the next boss rush and uh, and put cards back to uh, to try and draw into another ship essentially because that's what I really would like is I would like more ships I want another ship to special summon off of great fortress and if he has something to out the great fortress I've got the last great fortress in my hand already uh, so it's not really that big of an ish but, so what I've got is I've got the access to the Emerald. Once he gets done thinking about what he wants to do in response to my play, I'm going to go ahead and put, I can put Viper under this um, Drancia just in case I have to chain to something like Fiendish Chain. Um, I mean, I'm thinking Archaic Yu-Gi-Oh, but I'm playing an Unranked. So, I mean, anything could happen. Legitimately anything can happen when you're playing an Unranked Yu-Gi-Oh. But, so we'll put those three back. Uh, just so, it, because there's really no reason to put Borbo ba uh, like back. Other than just to stack, 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 stack. Elemental Triangle. All right. 
So that's pretty good. Um, I've got access to the Momorat and Grave, though, to summon more from deck. Um, so I don't really have access to more ships, which is a bit of a problematic, like, thing. But honestly, it's fine. It's fine as is. Um, I can summon the Momorat and I can go into another Drancia. That is, uh, that is another option. Um, or I can just play Boss Rush. I can pop my MK3 and start getting things going in my favor. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll play the second boss rush, right? And I'll turn the Drancia to attack mode. And from here, what I'll be able to do is I can actually... Can I make another rank 4? If I pop this, get Momorat out of the deck? I think I can. Or I can pop Emerald and get another rank 4. I don't think it really m matters per se, because my rank 4 pool is pretty limited. Uh, but what I can do is... I can summon one Momorat from deck off of this, but I have two Momorats here and the Viper here. So yeah, there's nothing else to summon out of deck. Uh, so there's no reason to do that. I could definitely do against like, a fusion plays, but eh. There's no reason to overcomplicate this nonsense. So what we're going to do is we're going to attack with this. And if he has something like Storm and Mirror Force or something like that, I'm just going to use Drancia to pop my MK3. And then that will allow me to, uh, to do some other stuff. But as it stands, I'm just going to attack for damage, use Drancia as a defensive line, I'm going to start stacking up onto it. What I'm going to do main phase 2 is I'm going to actually, I'm going to use Drancia's effect to pop my big core. And I'm going to stack up on top of it so it have, has a ton more materials. Um, is basically how this is going to work. Because I'm 200 off game here, which uh, I probably should have just seen coming if I had just thought, uh, thought to do math. But otherwise... <laughs> Otherwise, it's fine, because I've got Dimension Barrier, I've got all these cards, and I, I'm not worried about the fact that he has one Fuzzy Lanius, which I can very easily counterbalance and stop. Um, there's there's not anything I'm too worried about here, uh, if we're being completely realistic. But So I'm going to put every single one of the of the Zodiac Beast Exceeds monsters on top of this, except Tigris. Tigris is specifically the one I'm going to leave out, because Tigris will allow me to make the uh, Momorat rank 4 play again with, you know, it being out there, as well as Insufusion being access to Emerald. There's there's multiple factors as to why I'm doing this the way I'm doing it. But so, I'm going to be a capable, of, I'm going to be able to go into Drancia again, so, like, that'll be, oh Jesus, really? Torrential here. Okay. Uh, well, this doesn't die, and so now I have room for Instant Fusion, so I will Instant Fusion, and I'm going to do the exact same play again anyway. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, uh, so this will happen. This will bring back my... Uh, I can bring back Momorap, which could summon the other one from deck, but it doesn't really matter. Because uh, I'm just going to make Emerald, reset my resource pool, and then Elemental Triangle into what I want to do. So, like, it's... It is so easy. Because um, I'm going to put back the Momorap, and I've got the one in hand, and this should be... Fine, Emerald, and there's nothing else that matters here, right? Because I've got Tigris, I've got, I've got Tigris, I've got Broadbull, and I've got Drancia. Um, I think the Wild Bow might matter, so I'll just put it back in case it does, uh, just for numbers, uh, for numbers of summons. Because I've got Tigris, I've got Drancia, I've got Broadbull, I've got that. Um, so like that, that should make it pretty easy to deal with. And so now I can use my Elements Triangle to pop my uh, my big core and summon the uh, the Momorat from my deck. So this is this is all just coming up swimmingly. Like this this synergizes very well. And the Zodiac engine just synergizes with like everything. It's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how much it just synergizes, but I mean whatever. <laughs> it's literally whatever at this point, uh, because of how how it functions. Oh, why did I even put back the uh, why did I even put back the uh, the the wild boar thing, the broad boar or not the what is it? Borbo? That one. Why did I even put that back when uh, when I'd already see summoned it this turn with its uh, with its put it on top of one um, effect? Don't quite know that one myself. But so what we'll do is we'll detach this. We'll summon the Momorat from uh, from deck, and then I'll be able to put Drancia on top of this, detach, summon the Momorat from hand, and make uh, another Digesto Emerald <laughs> if I so feel like uh, if I still feel like doing. Uh, and then I'll be able to uh, summon two uh, machines out of my deck in the end phase off of the uh, off of the boss rushes. So this is all just really, really good. This is 
almost borderline ridiculous. The fact that I just ha have this much recursion. I'm going to make another emerald here. Um, even though I run the risk of losing my infinite resource pool, uh, it just seems really strong to do so. So we will do so. Uh, but So we'll put back this, this, and the viper. Uh, just so that I have access into more things, basically. That's all we're looking for, is access into more things. That's all we want. Uh, dimensional Barrier Calling at Seas is a very strong option. That's terraforming. I don't have any more Great Fortress Zelloses, so that's a little bit of an ish. But it's fine, because we'll be able to use the Boss Rushes to summon the Tetran in Defense Mode, which will gain a counter. Uh, so this is a form of Spell and Trap removal next turn. And I actually might just get a second Tetran. Um, just because if he sets more cards, I want to be able to have access to dealing with those cards. So yeah, double Tetran seems fine. Now, I honestly wish I had room in my extra deck for at least one rank six. I could probably get away with cutting the, uh, the Dweller, um, and that would, uh, that would free up room for one rank six. And that would probably just be what we would need to, uh, to, like, make this deck, like, have a good presence with what you do with the Tetrans, because you do like to float down into Tetrans a lot, or at least, I say you, I mean me, I really like floating down into Tetrans, uh, because of what it allows you to do, it allows you to pop, um, it allows you to pop, uh, spells and traps, so, that's really kind of important, um, is the fact that it allows you to do that, because it's a spell and trap card removal, it's easy, it's easy to understand, it's spell and trap card removal, um, which, I mean, you have removal of monsters in the form of Drancia, and you have removal of uh, spells and traps with your Tetrans. So it's it's a very, very, like, synergistic little interaction. Uh, but so will Dimensional Barrier Calling exceeds here, uh, just because I'm an asshole, and so that's what I kind of feel like doing. I feel like beating people. I feel like bullying people when they're down. Now, the Drancia is turned off, so that's a little bit of a problem, but at the same time, his entire deck doesn't have a win condition. So... Request a rematch? What? I thought I hosted in match format. I could have sworn I hosted in match format. So hopefully he accepts the rematch, because I would love to keep this video streamlined, but if he doesn't, damn it, he didn't. I was wondering why it was like so easy to get a person to accept to my uh, to my host. I thought it was just like ridiculous. Is this the, is this the same person? I don't even know. I know I've played somebody by this name at least once today, so it could very well just be the same person, but we'll find out. So, I'm gonna, he, he won Rock, Paper, Scissors, and he told me to go first, and that's what the person that I played previously in this video did, so I guess we will, uh, we'll see. I guess I'll find out when I edit the video if it's the same person or not, but, uh, the previous person I played did not accept the rematch, which is insane. I could have sworn I set up my host under match format, uh, pretenses. And so I did think it was really weird when I got a uh, an, a person to uh, accept my host so quickly, because usually people are very hesitant to play matches, even in unranked. I don't get it. I don't quite understand. Uh, but I was it was it was weird to me. Let's just say that. And so what I'm doing is I'm doing this um, instead of summoning the Momorat from hand. One because this is more bodies. If I have to tribute summon for one of these, I can tribute for the Tetran over the Invoker. And I'll feel like I have lost nothing in terms of uh, in terms of playline, and so uh, so that's that. As well as the fact that um, like if I draw into Great Fortress Zelos or terraforming off of the Digasto Emerald, then I'm inevitably going to make this turn. Then that means that I haven't used my normal summon yet, so I can play the Boss Rush, even though this Momorite is here. So uh, so yeah, we will uh, we'll deal with these in the ways that I see fit. There's at least some thought process behind the shenanigans that I do. And, uh, and so, we'll, we'll see how they work. Now, I just, I think it's hilarious how Mulmorat, or excuse me, Marmorat, I think it's hilarious how it just has so much, uh, synergies with literally any rank 4 deck, or any deck that wants to make rank 4s. If you have 7 slots in your extra deck, you can play a Mulmorat engine, because you need the 5 Zodiac Beast Exceeds monsters to be the most compact package, and then, all you need is 2 Digesto Emeralds. From there, that's literally all you need. This engine is infinite. All you need from there, if you want to make room for them, is additional rank fours. That's all you need room for. So it's literally half your extra deck. If you can support half your extra deck being used by these cards, then you can do it. 
very straightforwardly. But so we're gonna make Emerald here. I'm going to detach the uh, the Mulmorat from this first. Excuse me. Oh, the Viper's in my hand. That's why. Never mind. So we'll put Drancia on top of this. Uh, I think a second Viper in the main deck might be worthwhile, um, just because sometimes it is hard to add it back. There are certain little nuances of things that can come up, uh, so, I don't know. This this entire thing can be tweaked, this entire deck can be increased in count. I mean, there's there's multiple things that can happen. Uh, but so from here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and normal summon this Tetran, because the Invoker has almost no purpose here anymore. The Tetran will gain three counters. It can't die in battle, and it will be removal for spells and traps. That's what we want it to be. I don't have access to boss rush, which kind of sucks, but I mean, damn. We will uh, we will see how it goes. But I've got Max C in hand, which is strong. I've got Max C backed by Drancia, backed by a Viper that my opponent doesn't know about. Uh, my opponent does not know about this Viper, so that's actually kind of good, kind of important in that, like, I can just get him out of nowhere with it. Uh, but that almost rarely is never a huge factor, but Viper is definitely one of those cards that could probably just go up in quantity um, in the deck. So we'll uh, we'll see how it goes, but ultimately I'm not afraid of this if it's still Raid Raptors. We'll find out, though, because I don't know if it's the same guy. It is the same guy! It is the same guy. So he is still playing Raid Raptors. So good! That means the video can still technically be a match, because if I win this game, that means I won two out of three. Even though there was no side decking involved, the side deck that you saw for this deck in the, uh, in the, basically, I guess I can call it title screen, the deck portion of this video, was very generic and very basic anyway, so there's not really a lot that had to be, uh, worked with or worried about. So at this point, I've got Drancia, which I can use to, uh, to pop cards, essentially, again. Like, if he, if he makes a four strix here, then I'm just going to, ooh, Dark Rebellion. Oh, oh, Dark Rebellion. Oh, man. You almost make me want to pop you. Yeah, I do. So we will. So I'll pop the Dark Rebellion. Um, now, that could have actually been really bad for me if he had the quick play rank up magic. The, uh, the Phantom Knight's rank up magic. That could have been terrible for me. I actually should have thought that one through. Probably should have let him go in Well, no, he could have played around my Drancia with that um, as well. So maybe not. Maybe I'm just thinking way too far into it. Because, yeah, he could have gone to it. I could have let him use the effect. He could have gone to battle phase. He could have attacked. And then I could have used Drancia, and then he could have chained uh, Phantom Knights of Launch. Um, so, yeah. And made a Dark Requiem at Seize Dragon. So, yeah, that that was that was, that was was fine on my aspect. Uh, so, he's added Raid Raptors and Nest. And he's set one spell and trap. Conveniently enough for me to uh, for me to use my, uh, my Tetran on. And so now, as, as it stands, I'm going to be able to use Tetran to remove a counter to pop this, right? Seems pretty straightforward. And so that's Revolution Force, uh, which means... Has no Exceeds Materials. Ha ha ha! They both have one! Get fucked! Alright, so I have one Marmorat under the, uh, under the Drancia, and I've got one under the Emerald, which means if I activate this detaching this to shuffle back this one, shuffle back the bull, and shuffle back the max C, then I'm going to be able to have access into summoning one out of deck off the Drancia. Um, and then, uh, okay, this is a big core mark three, which means I can use this to summon Mulmorats. I can go into two more Mulmorats. I can tribute the Emerald to summon another one of my big ships. So I'm literally playing this game without the field spell, it seems. Um, I mean, which is fine, I guess, but, I mean, it's kind of shitty. Uh, but, so we'll put this on top of this, we'll, uh, we'll put the Tigris on top and attach Drancia, and, uh, and then put the Mulmorat back underneath, and then summon the second Mulmorat from deck. And then that'll be pretty good, I think. And then we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to make the, uh, the second Emerald after we tribute this one off, and then establish our infinite engine, uh, in the, uh, best way I can see fit. But, so, this Mulmorat will go, to summon uh, this one, and then I can make Bullhorn uh, into... I can make Bullhorn into Drancia. Uh, yes, I would love to just summon it off one. So we'll summon Bullhorn on top of this, and then I can tr I can actually make the Emerald now and see if I draw the field spell first. 
Um, that's actually going to be probably the most important thing. Um, because I can wait on the Drancia until later. Uh, but what I definitely want to do is I want to, uh, I want to see if I draw the field spell first. Because I want to put these back, as well as the Drancia. Because we're just trying to establish this as an infinite engine. It's pretty clear cut. But so these will go back. I draw Terra Top, so I have not drawn the field spell. So now at this point I can tribute for the, uh, for, over the Emerald. And that would be pretty good. Uh, so what I can put is I can do Crystal Core because it's got more uh, counters, but Tetran is better for back row removal as we've already established. Uh, but let's see, what is this? 18 plus what? 12, so that'd be 3k uh, plus 36. Um, so that would be, I think this would, well now why am I counting this? This would be this. So this would be 39, yeah, 39 plus uh, 3,000. So it wouldn't be game either way. So the Tetran is just all in all more um, more well readily establishable. Like, because it can pop multiple back rows. Because its effect is only once per turn to uh, to pop stuff. So that would be the problem there. But I'm just going to I'm gonna use this, the Tetran Tigris, to search for a, uh, a Momorat just so I get extra cards. Free cards is always nice, as we've established multiple times in the past. Uh, if I have the opportunity for free cards, I'm going to take it, especially since I don't have boss rush tying up my field, so I can definitely normal summon Momorat um, if, like, if my board gets broken. So, not something I'm too worried about, but we're we're trying to we're trying to plan ahead, right? Trying to plan ahead, at least we think so. But this is a bunch of small shitty shit, so this is going to be 6,600 damage all told together. So, and then I'll be able to flip the dimensional barrier on his turn, calling seas. And it's just going to be, it's going to be pretty much as easily as it was last time, unfortunately. Um, but, I mean, that's the way it goes. Dimensional Barrier literally ends turns, and I think this card probably shouldn't exist in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, this card is insane. This card is obscene. This card is ridiculous. And I think I said those things when this card was spoiled, and when I did my card review on it. I said it was probably unfair, considering it just ends turns, but, I mean... It's not banned, it exists, so I'm gonna play it. And that's the that's the way the cookie crumbles, as it uh, as it seems. But so no boss rush, no great fortress Zelos. I've not drawn one of my nine ofs this game. <laughs> and thusly, like I don't know. I don't know how I should feel about that. I've drawn all my ships, have not drawn a field spell, which is a six of and I have not drawn Boss Rush, which is the three of. So all told, there's nine copies of it, and I've been drawing cards like crazy. I've drawn off three Emeralds. I've drawn, like, two cards off Max C. Um, like, it's... It's pretty bad. <laughs> um, it's pretty bad, considering. Uh, but, so I could either Drancia pop this. In fact, I'm going to, because he's already used his Normal Summon on it. So I'm just going to Drancia pop it. That way he can't, like, special Fuzzy Lanius. Does that make me rude? I think it makes me rude. Considering I already have basically the game ender sitting face down, the fact that I'm just doing that is just kind of kind of agitating to myself as well as my opponent. Yeah, there we go. See? Like, there's just so many ways I could have won this game, and there's so many ways that I did win this game, but I just didn't use the field spell. So I'm just using the Zodiac engine as tribute fodder, which is all told kind of interesting, the fact that I had to play out a game like this on camera where you're basically just cycling through with these things and he has two spells and traps so I could definitely pop both of them next turn with my Tetrans uh, before uh, before doing anything else but I don't know I just think I think cards like Dimensional Barrier probably shouldn't exist in Yu-Gi-Oh like I think it was okay with Solemn Strike because Solemn Strike does everything that good that Dimensional Barrier does but in a more fair manner uh, but that's just my opinion but anyway as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and if you like the video definitely be sure to like if you're new here maybe consider subscribing it helps me out a ton and helps the channel and community within it grow but other than that check out the links on screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might also like there's a thousand plus uploads over there so if you can't find something else you also like i'd be incredibly surprised and other than that, if you want to support me directly, there is a Patreon that I've set up, and there's a link to it on screen as well as in the description of this video. And if you can find it in the goodness of your heart to donate, no matter what the amount, I would be as, just as grateful. I would be eternally grateful to you, and it helps me out a ton, and it helps me continue to bring what I think to be quality content to you, and also have the chance to improve that content moving into the future. But other than that, that's all up to you. But as I've already said, thanks for watching, thank you for your time as usual, and take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.